Welcome back to Nightline, our 9 o'clock hour, and thank you for joining us. We always say that Nightline is there's something clean in the air, and we're just glad to be here and bring that message to you. And uh, we thank God for our prayer partners that are here tonight, ready to take your call if you have a need. So you just get on the phone and call us and let us know. And Tony, who we got tonight? Well, we have an actress. Her name is Annette Duncan. And she was in the new movie, Dolphin Island. Came out in March. And I'll tell you a little bit about the movie. It's about a 14-year-old girl named Annabelle who lives with her fisherman grandfather on kind of like an island, a paradise island. Um, she is surrounded by an extended family of loving but quirky neighbors. And her best friend is the dolphin, Mitzi. <laughs> So everything changes when her maternal grandparents arrive with a lawyer to bring her back to New York. So basically it's all up to Annabelle and her friends to figure out how to save the day and prove that love conquers all. I can tell this is gonna be a very unique type night tonight. So let's talk a little bit about Annette Duncan who's who is uh, one of the stars in the movie, the main character, isn't she? Annette Duncan has taught English and critical thinking at Carthage College in Kenosha, Wisconsin for 33 years. She also serves on Title IX coordinator and leader of the Academic Senate, while her stage acting and musical theater experience spans the past three decades. In the past two years, she has stepped into the world of film and television. In her latest feature film, Dolphin Island, she enjoyed playing the role of Cheryl Williams. Annette lives in Franklin, Wisconsin, and her husband, Reverend David Duncan. Uh, they have, they li actually have a church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and they have seven children and seven great-grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> you used to live in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I did. Right? In fact, that's where uh, your sister was born. Right. My oldest daughter, Dana, was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. So, hey, we got a little something in common Yeah, I'm today. looking forward to um, speaking with her tonight. But again, this movie is called Dolphin Island, and it seemed very encouraging and just mm -hmm. a good, good quality film. But we wanted to give you the opportunity to watch the trailer and check it out for yourself. So uh, enjoy the trailer. You know what? Every day is a good day, as long as I have my two girls. Is that right, Mitzi? So what happened to her parents? In a diving accident 10 years ago. This is my home. Missy's an impeccable judge of both humor and character. Anna is all I have left of my boy. I wanted to teach her how to be happy. Instead, she taught me. You are not taking her! Well, that trailer definitely intrigues me to want to see that and have my daughter watch it as well. Like I said, it um, looks like a very encouraging movie. And today we have Annette Duncan, who was also in the movie Dolphin Island. So we just want to welcome you this evening. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Thanks, Tony and Mary. I'm so happy to be here. Well, tell us how you got involved with this movie, Dolphin Island. Well, I should preface that with a little bit of a story. Okay. I've been a, a professor of English uh, for 
33 years now, and that's been my, my primary source of uh, activity and identity. And I would do stage acting, but about two years ago, a little less than two years ago, my son-in-law moved back from Hollywood, where he'd been acting, started a film school in Milwaukee, and I thought, I've always wanted to do that. And so I uh, went ahead and said, well, I'll be a supportive mother-in-law, and I'll join your film classes. And um, he really taught me so much. And as I began to apply to Actors Access and that sort of thing, um, opportunities began to open. But nothing quite like filming in the Bahamas. And so uh, one night I was going through uh, breakdowns on Actors Access where you submit for roles. And I jokingly said to my son who was there, oh, and here's one in the Bahamas. What would you think if your mom left Milwaukee in the middle of winter and went to the Bahamas and filmed a movie? And we both laughed, but I thought, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and submit. This looks like a really beautiful uh, film. So I did, and I got a call back. Yay. And so I, I went through that process. <clears throat> and then it was maybe uh, two months later that I got a call from the producer, one of the producers. And of course, of course, I was I was acting very calm, cool, and collected, and said, "Well, yes, yes, I believe I would love to accept that role. Thank you so much." And I was at my office. I had been teaching a night class, but everybody had left. I was just doing a little grading, and I hung up the phone very calmly. And then I screamed. I just absolutely was so excited at this possibility, not just because it's in the, it was filmed in the Bahamas, and there's a lot more to that but also because it is the kind of film I want to be identified with. It has so much to do with family and love and really good values. Um, would you like me to tell you just a little bit about the, um, the character or is that coming a little later? Yes, tonight? tell us a yes. little bit about the story and the character you played. All right, thanks, Mary. I uh, got a call from the director before we all headed down there, Mike Disa. He's so wonderful. And he said to me, which is, this is unusual for a director to do. He said, you know, as we're putting the organic final touches on the script, I'd just like to know what you bring to this character. What is it about Annette Duncan that is significant that you would love to see my character, Cheryl Williams, convey. And uh, so he said, is she this, are you that? And then he said, are you a person of faith? And I said, oh, yes, actually I am. I was not expecting a director of a film to directly ask me that, but I said, absolutely, I'm a Christ follower. I would love to bring that to this character. And he said, well then, let's, let's find places. And we began to talk about ways for the uh, reality of Cheryl's faith and how that impacts her decision and uh, her decisions rather and her actions in the film um, just from the core of who she is. So it was a privilege to bring that into the character. You know, it's, it's just great to see all these family films that are coming out and uh, the whole family can sit and watch TV together. A lot of movies, you just can't sit and watch TV with the family, completely nope. with the whole family. But um, what actually draws you to the family films? The litmus test that I use is, is this something that I want my kids or my grandkids to be watching 10 or even 20 years from now? Because once you do a film, it's up there. It's on IMDb. It's out there forever and ever, no matter if you think, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that too bad, too late, you know. And so I really feel like in, in um, our society, we are looking for wholesome, healthy things that we can do as a family, that we can come together. Nothing wrong with, with sitting and watching something as long as you're not going to be like, oh, oh, okay, now close your eyes. Oh, 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 you know, go in the other room, go, go get a popsicle, you know, because those moments come up. And instead where you can just watch and um, look over at my granddaughter as her eyes are just full of wonder at what's being watched. It's not about me being in a movie, ultimately. It's about the impact, the lasting legacy that, that each of us passes on. So um, I, I feel like this movie is very successful in bringing families together and, and you know, uh, 
I don't know, Mary, if you've had a chance to watch it yet, but I think adults will enjoy this just <laughs> as much as children. So. Well, I love the quality of it too. You know, that is just, it was high quality. Um, and I, I agree that there's not many movies that you can actually walk away from, like you said, with your family and feel good about it. So we're just meeting more and more um, actors and directors that are putting films like this out that just make it more family friendly. And I know that there's some great companies out there that that's their passion to really release clean family movies. So it's very encouraging. Now, I was thinking, you said you sent in your audition and you got the part. Like, you made it sound real easy. I'm sure you went through a lot of... Um, <laughs> Maybe we could try work. I know, sometime. I'm about to send a part in for to be in the Bahamas. Um, that sounds really nice. But you arrived in the Bahamas um, right after the hurricane. So tell us a little bit about that experience and what that looked like. You know, it was it was a very sobering experience. Um, the night before I was to be in the Bahamas, there were three of us who had come from different places in the U.S. A lot of the actors were from either L.A. or um, other places in the nation. And so three of us were, were there, and we were going to take what's called a Bellaria, which is kind of in between a small boat and a cruise liner, and uh, take the Bellaria over to Freeport, from Florida, and then we found out very late night that the Bellaria had been canceled because the weather was just not uh, cooperating. So they asked if I would be willing to go in a four-seater plane and fly over there, and I, I was a little loath to tell my husband, but I said, oh yeah, that sounds like fun. And so uh, we were flying over kind of giddy and thinking, oh, this is just so spectacular, you know, it's this real type of feeling. And then as we actually started coming in over the southern side of the island, which is the portion of the island that was um, absolutely, what I was told was a 10 foot wall of water just came in and um, leveled things down to the rock. And a lot of, lot of lives were lost, a lot of trauma and suffering. And as you could see the evidence, I mean, even the airport at that point had not had a chance to be rebuilt. And so as we landed, I'm thinking, wh where's the airport? It was a little tent over to the side where just two individuals sat quietly as, as the customs department. And it, it just was surreal, you know? Our driver who had experienced all of this took us to location from the airport. And which, by the way, <laughs> I wanna say very, very clearly, the Bahamas have recuperated and the airport is good and I would so I cannot wait to get back there as a tourist and uh, we can really do some good by going there which I, I'll talk more about later if you'd like but um, at that point it was just too close to the tragedy so he he was telling us about um, the suffering he had experienced and other people and it was just, it was 20 minutes to location and we just sat in silence. There is nothing, nothing that can be said in response to the kind of suffering those people faced. But inspiringly, as we got to know the people, I truly, I never met a Bahamian that was not full of smiles, positivity, love, hospitality. What awesome, awesome people. So we were glad to be able to infuse their economy a little bit and, and to bring them a little bit of joy and uh, to keep doing that in the future efforts. Oh, that's awesome. It's nice to know that things are being rebuilt. And um, yes. I'm so glad that you guys were able to go there and, and kind of you know, make a movie that brings some attention to the Bahamas as well as a beautiful place. Well, we are going to have Sarah Bear sing Once and For All for us, and then we'll be back to speak with Annette Duncan Moore. God, I give you what I can today. These scattered ashes that are hid away I lay it all at your feet From 
turn the corners of my deepest shame The empty places where I've worn your name Show me the love I say I believe Oh, help me lay it down Oh, Lord, I lay it down Oh, let this be where I die, my Lord, with thee, crucified, be lifted up as my kingdom's Once and for all Once and for all There is victory in my Savior's loss And from the crimson flowing from the cross Pour over me Pour over me for that song. Yes. We are back with Annette Duncan talking to her about the movie Dolphin Island. Well, say, um, how was the process of co-starring with a dolphin? I've, oh, I've never known anybody to co-star with a dolphin. <laughs> this That's is our a first, <laughs> first time we've ever <laughs> asked that. <laughs> yeah, well, I, like probably many of your viewers, I was uh, the girl who grew up reading Island of the Blue Dolphins and watching flipper reruns and things like that and loved dolphins, but I was absolutely astounded, truly astounded, when I got the opportunity to actually work with them. Um, they, the first few days of shooting, they were swimming around in, in the sanctuary there. It's not like a zoo. They're not contained in a small space. Thankfully, they have lots of room to range in the ocean area there and have a very natural habitat. Um, but they work with the uh, trainers and learn all kinds of um, special abilities. So the first couple of days, I was like, oh, cool. You know, I'm taking pictures of a distant dolphin thinking they're so cute. They're so cute. And they would look at me like, you know, you're interesting too. 
But then we got the opportunity before the movie had filmed too far to actually swim with the dolphins to have that experience. And they showed us like certain hand motions to do to make the dolphins flip or to make them nod their or shake their heads and to talk and things like that. And it was just so fun. And then we got to, we each had our own dolphin that we were working with. And then we got to swim with them around the ocean and it oh, was wonderful. From that day forward, and this illustrates the intelligence and the sensitivity of those animals, we, every time I would walk down the dock toward the boat where we were filming, my dolphin would spot me and zoom up to the edge mm -hmm. and come out and start talking and nodding his head and moving his flippers, trying to get me to come back and swim with him. He had bonded with me during just that, that initial swim and he trusted me. And I thought, that's almost human-like. Yeah. And really many directors would have been happy if every one of their talent were as precise and on cue as those dolphins were. They're, they're wonderful. They are amazing animals. My family, we've been swimming with dolphins in the ocean as well, and it's, it's really a neat experience. Now, the character Annabelle, she's the main character, and she's a resilient teenager. Um, do you hope that she could be a role model for kids uh, her age after watching this movie? Absolutely. And not because Annabelle is perfect in the movie either. Um, she makes some good choices and then she, like all of us, reaches a point where she feels like she doesn't have any good choices in front of her, any good options. And so she, she makes some choices, particularly at one point, that lead to some pretty dire circumstances. We've all done that. We all do that. You know, despite our best efforts, we, we may panic in certain situations. And yet Annabelle recovers from um, the choices that she makes and makes more good choices. So I, I think her, like you said, her resilience, her persistence, her warmth, her willingness to forgive and be open to family members who may not have always been there for her, those kinds of things. I, I really hope that particularly young people will look at her and think, you know, I, I think I want to make some choices like that. What do you think, hope that uh, families will take away from the movie? Uh, it, being an English professor, I look for themes and there are so many themes in this movie that you could look at, themes of courage and love and trust and I, I hope that people will see the the imperfect family that is portrayed here and realize that even through our imperfections because we try really hard to show that our families are absolutely perfect to the rest of the world it's just kind of in our nature to do that you know but uh, even so we all have our points of tension and our difficulties and and the places we don't look like the ideal family maybe to the rest of the world and through all that really making it through all that together and letting love win and letting forgiveness and courage win those kinds of things are what sustain us what keep us together what uh, let us move forward with hope and life and love very encouraging <laughs> <laughs> okay. um well tell us what is next for you what easy like how are you going to get that next role? Well, I just, I'm still, I'm a little bit in awe that you sent that in. And, but that just is the favor of the Lord, knowing it was the right part for you. Can I just take a moment and let that resonate? Yes. Because that's precisely, precisely what it is, Tony. Um, it is not that uh, necessarily, you know, acting is always a little bit of a, um, you may have a fabulous audition, but at the same time, you may not quite look the part or you might not fit just right with another character that's al already cast. And so, you know, it's, it's just uncertain and, and it's a challenge. It's a challenge to go forward. You always give every audition everything and then let it go because mm -hmm. otherwise you'll drive yourself insane. And so um, uh, it, it is precisely, in fact, I'm gonna tell you, I have, a very, very special friend, she's been a friend for about 20 years, I think, who is an intercessor, and she prays for me every single night for the past 10 years. She has not missed one night 
through sickness, through trials of her own. And she has begun praying the last couple of years for God's favor here. And um, so I, I am absolutely grateful and thankful. And I want to use whatever opportunities and platforms that God gives me to bring glory to him and to encourage people toward faith and, and toward love. That's awesome. So, and, and to answer your question, I'm not sure. I've got a few auditions out there right now, but I haven't heard back yet. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> we know that the Lord goes before us and um, that uh, he has great plans for us. And so I'm just um, excited yes. for you and what he has for mm -hmm. you. And uh, if you have not seen this movie yet, Dolphin Island, you have to check it out. You know, we have um, people that call into the station each night and they send us emails, they send us messages, and um, they need healing, they need restoration in their relationships, in their families. And I know that there are many families watching tonight that may have a broken family. Um, yes. I would love for you to just take some time and to pray over our viewers. We, um, we have, I mean, how many do you think we have? We have a good many that call each night. It's just varies, you know, from week to week. You know, yeah, we so do. there's we have a lot hundreds of people, of people out there that, yes. um, I even know that a movie like this could encourage people, like you said, with the, even the main character yes. having, um, not being perfect, like none of us are perfect, but being able to make good choices and um, allow the Lord to lead us in that. So I'll just give it to you and um, let you pray over our viewers tonight. Yes. I would love to do that. And as I do, I will just mention that I personally came from a very <clears throat> beautiful but broken family and uh, experience that myself. So I'm going to pray um, for your viewers who were hurting in that area. Father, we just thank you. We thank you for these places like Tony and Mary are providing, places of encouragement, places of truth where your truth can go forward, places where we can turn and find hope and find a, a light in what can feel like encroaching darkness at times. And so, Father, I pray for everyone who has a need, who's listening right now. We know you're not bound by time or space or anything. And so we ask very boldly in Jesus' name that you would bring healing, healing to relationships, healing to families, healing and encouragement to hearts that are hurting. And um, we ask that you would pro provide blessing where people uh, have need, that you would fill those spaces, Lord. And I, I just thank you for your love and concern for each one of us. We ask in Jesus' name. And my dog agrees. <laughs> <laughs>